away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Baltimore Ravens. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime, but kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon God and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor at m and Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we continue on in Wild Card Weekend with a great AFC matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Baltimore Ravens. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the postseason on EA Sports. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, that's really all I need to say to get you fired up. It's the postseason on EA Sports. And no one's more fired up than the guys who are going to be playing in this game. This is what they fought for all in year long. Go back to the, the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp, throughout the season um, to get to the playoffs. Intensity level will be off the charts. <laughs> card game. Now Austin Eckler on the return. Time to focus in on Phillip Rivers as he brings out the Chargers offense. And looking back to week four, Rivers passed John Elway to move into eighth place all time in passing yards. And the two guys ahead of him now in sixth and seventh, both active, both from his draft class, Charles, Eli Manning and Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, so when you start about draft classes with quarterbacks, obviously 1983 comes up big. I mean, it's got its own show, all right? People talk about it all the time. Elway, of course, was part of that. But this class of 2004, that's Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, and of course, Philip Rivers, give a pretty good run for their money, aren't they? Yeah, quite a few wins, quite a few Super Bowls in that crew. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. With that, let's check out how the Chargers line up on offense. Keenan Allen checks every box for me as a receiver. Size, speed, strength, intelligence in what he's doing. But I love his competitiveness. When that ball's in the air, he goes after it and usually comes down with it. And last but not least, we can lay to bed the myth that he can't run fast. Keenan Allen can get up and go. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it'll be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. A great effort there. 27 yards. And the Chargers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Forget about the storylines of being intimidated in the playoffs on the road. I mean, that was pretty clinical right there. Yeah, they didn't treat it like it was a playoff game in January, did they? No. Look. That felt much more like, hey, we're back in August, running a few drills in the practice field. They seem unaffected by what they're facing in this one. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. 
There's Lamar Jackson as Welcome he brings Lamar out Jackson. the Baltimore Ravens, and he has been dynamic at QB since taking over in Week 11. Reports saying Joe Flacco likely not back in Baltimore next year. So have you seen enough from Lamar Jackson to say, hey, he's the guy going forward? Well, the team has certainly adopted the fact that he is the guy going forward because of how they've played. They're winning a lot of games with him at quarterback. My biggest concern is how often he's actually running the football, and not all of it is off of scrambles and broken plays. There are a lot of designed runs. He's had games of 17, 18, and 26 carries. Those are tailback numbers, not quarterback numbers. I don't know that it's sustainable going forward, but for right now, 2018, this is exactly what they need. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. We'll see. Now Jackson on second down. But he gets this one. Oh, my God. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. Ten yards there. Good enough for a Raven first down. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, they're... I just need, sorry, guys, I just need, need to make a change real quick. tendency is to aggressively strike back and let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football but how about his use oh. of he fires one that's intercepted that's picked up by the linebacker Jutavis Brown and his guys will take over at their own 44 yard line the Los Angeles Chargers you think Week 15, Charles, that win over Kansas City. Look, they're not sneaking up on anybody anymore. I mean, this is a team that can make a run in the postseason. Not only can they make a run in the postseason, their head coach, Anthony Lynn, truly believes in the team because in that win in week 15, remember he opted to go for two after the late touchdown at work. And when they asked him about it after the game, he said, it was a no-brainer. With my team, we're going for it. But I give you on this team. They're not sneaking up on anyone. Yeah, they're also going to be a handful for anyone that they're going to pull out. And remember, they also beat Pittsburgh in December as well. So this is a team that is very, very talented. Both of those games, by the way, primetime matchups, and the whole nation saw them. Yeah, the last part, they can go on the road and win. That's a big, big deal because of that defense. Rivers. Henry's got it. Out on the left side. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out. Finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them. And we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. Sets for Keenan Allen. First catch of this wild card game for a 1,000-yard receiver in the regular season. He's got a first down, too. A first red zone opportunity here for the Chargers. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this Guys, game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. I, should I say three? 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 I know the first quarter. So we hit the quarter break in round one of the AFC playoffs. Seven nothing is our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. 
They face a second and seven to start things out. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. Nice. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. Melvin Gordon, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the Ooh, ball. But how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now 14 to nothing. The return man, Chris Moore. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Baltimore's offense coming back onto the field. And for the Ravens, Charles, it's really no question that the season sort of changed when Lamar Jackson was put in at quarterback. He ran off four wins in his first five starts. Oh. Looking for Crabtree, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Adrian Phillips. And he is going to bring this back Lamar inside Jackson. the 20 to the 18 yard line. Crabtree, the target on that one. So that's back to back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, What's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives them a first and goal. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he stepped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you, you want are, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Ready, watch the team. Now a second down throw for Rivers. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking... And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Travis Benjamin, a five-yard touchdown. And the Chargers are going to add on to their lead. Now the try here for the pull and after. It's never fun for a defense to run on the field knowing that they're having to defend a short field. Just the idea of trying to limit an offense in that position, daunting for a defense. The extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 21 to zip. Now Jones. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. So they won their division and earned the right to play at home in the first round of the playoffs. But this one is not going to script so far. Nowhere did they have the thought process that they'd be down double digits. But the good Ooh, thing wow. is, it's the first half. You, you and I know, I mean, you've been with me long enough now. Hang with the game plan. Stay the course for a while. Don't panic and change up things. Keep grinding. Long way to go in this ballgame. That was my question to you. You don't throw everything away at this point. Stay on course. Oh. Stay on course. Obviously, you want to eliminate the things that have caused you to be yeah. down double digits. I'm, I'm, but at the same time, you're not getting it all back in one now, play. I just Keep going. I think that's the third time we've done that already. I, just, I haven't noticed it badly this time. The game plan was put in there for a reason. Third and two. Here's Jackson. And some strong running. Oh, he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Melvin go Ingram able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage and it'll be fourth down 
We said it before the game, and I think it's still apparent. If these guys are going to advance in these playoffs, they're going to have to wreak some havoc coming off the edge. Yeah, wild card round. They told us the wild card could be that defensive pressure. They showed it there. Meeting the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth have... down, and they stop him short of the oh, marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. And he gets this one yeah, inside the 15, so really just a yard bro. or two shy of the 10. A nice little completion there by Philip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday. Fifth grade, Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations. So he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Two minutes to go here in the first half. A reminder coming up at the half, as we've done all year. We'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown on what's going on here in this wild card weekend as we begin on the road to Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Terrell Suggs able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And his kick is indeed good. And that stretches this lead even further. It's now 24 to nothing. So a good snap, good hold, and right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit him, partner. You mean like uh, kicking the ball? Exactly. Well, that was a good sport. Doesn't matter. <laughs> on one level, you hit them, they go through. I think the block in the back. Return team. Yeah, this is going to put them back in a not great down. field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. Jackson now. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. Ooh, nice. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them. And a loose oh. football. But it looked like a Raven was able to get in there, and they will indeed keep the possession. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking and act. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. On third down, Jackson. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's hey, complete. On. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Travis Benjamin deep for the Chargers. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Take it at the 37. Nifty footwork at the 45. And he gets this to the he other side of going, midfield man. across the 45 before going out. Up there. Rivers on first down. Benjamin with it over the middle. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. So a gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. 
So we're at halftime of this AFC wild card matchup as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. This is the fourth and final game here on this wild card weekend. We'll get back out to you guys in just a moment. But first, let's take a look back to yesterday's AFC wild card game. And it's the Houston Texans who are not done yet as they were able to take care of the Indianapolis Colts. That's not true, guys. As for our game, it's been very one-sided in that first half. But you can't take anything for granted in playoff football. As we send you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. Oh, and he'll be brought on. down oh, right around the 37. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Jackson. This will be caught by Brown. And he's taken down at the 43. When you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective. Able to stop him before he can get a good head of steam going. Looking for more there on first oh, down, but this throw down field incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Now he drops oh, it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those those two elements together. So they can and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Looks like another empty possession here, partner. And I don't think with three scores down in the third quarter, they can truly afford any more the rest of the way. No, especially the way their offense is. Chargers coming hard, and they block it. Can't afford that either. Uh, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> no. And however form, but it's over your... And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the holding offense. Offense. I'm going to go ahead and start the second part up. 